Well, I had developed myself as a photographer, and uh, prior to graduating high school, I'd act I had sold uh, two st picture stories to Look. Oh, and I also sold them a picture. I sold them two picture stories and a, and a photograph of a news dealer sitting on 170th Street in the Grand Concourse with all the headlines saying, uh, Roosevelt, you know, dies, or FDR dead. Yeah. And he was sitting there looking uh, depressed. And uh, they liked this picture and used it in a... Uh, a whole series about Roosevelt, and it was sort of the final picture of the, of the series. Well, I was, a, I was an apprentice photographer for six months, and then I became a uh, staff photographer, and I was there for four years. And of course, that would have been the, you know, the period I'd spent in college, and I think that the, uh, you know, the things, what I learned, and uh, the practical experience uh, in every respect, including photography, what I learned in, in that four-year period exceeded what I could have learned in school. And um, also getting out of school, I can't remember what was the, the uh, particular turning point, but being out of school, I began to read. And uh, within a relatively short period of time, I would imagine caught up with where I probably should have been had I had a, a modicum of interest in things in high school. Like uh, everybody else, you know, I was always very interested in movies and I used to go uh, to see films and um, I'd say practically every film. It was the post-war Italian uh, sort of uh, the Rossellini pictures which uh, brought the art houses into existence. So there weren't that many good films that were ever played in, uh, you know, the theaters around except at the museum. A friend of mine who subsequently has become a film director named Alex Singer, uh, was working as an office boy at the March of Time. And uh, one day he told me that uh, it cost $40,000 to make a March of Time, and it was a one-reeler. And I said to him, gee, that's a lot of money. I said, uh, I can't believe it cost that much to make, you know, eight, eight or nine minutes of film. So I called up uh, Eastman Kodak and checked on the price of film. And then I call up the, <clears throat> the laboratory and find out how much it costs to develop it. And I checked on how much it costs to rent 35 millimeter movie cameras. Then I checked the cost of the other facilities, sound and editing and so forth. And um, uh, I forgot what it added up to, but it was it was uh, something like uh, that I could do a documentary film for about uh, $3,500. So I thought, gee. If they're making these pictures for forty thousand, and I can make them for thirty-five hundred, uh, surely I must be able to sell them and at least get my money back, and probably make a profit. You know. So, uh, in fact, I think we thought that we could make a considerable profit because we assumed that if they were making them for forty thousand dollars a piece, that they must be making a profit. You know. And uh, so, uh, I rented a uh, thirty-five millimeter IMO camera. That's spelled E Y E M O, which is a spring wound camera, produces a professional picture. And I did a, a documentary film um, about a boxer named Walter Cartier, who I had previously done a picture story for Look About, and I knew him. And it was called Day of the Fight. And um, got the whole thing, you know, did, ev did everything. Uh, Alex helped me, you know, sort of carried lights around and assisted me and I did the whole thing just myself and Alex and Walter and his, his people that he knew and um, cut it and uh, another friend of mine who subsequently has become a professional movie composer named Gerald Freed F-R-I-E-D did a film score and got the whole thing finished for $3,900 and uh, then when uh, we began to take it around to the various companies to, to sell it they all liked it, but we were offered things like $1,500 and $2,500 and so forth. At one point I said to them, you know, Christ, uh, uh, why, are you, why are you offering us so little for this? You know, one real shorts, you know, get more than $40,000. And they said, what, you must be crazy. And I said, why do you think that? And they, so I told them about the March of Time. And uh, anyway, they, they, they said it was, you know, was ridiculous. And... Shortly after that, the March of Time went out of business. <laughs> For the reason, we later found out that they were spending approximately, I mean, uh, you know, if the March of Time um, sues me for this, Alex 
somehow found out when he was working there that that it was costing forty thousand bucks to make one of their one reelers, and uh, they went out of business. Well, anyway, I finally sold the film to uh, RKO Pathé, who uh, are no longer in business either, and uh, sold it for about a hundred dollars less than it cost me to make it. I know it was a small loss. But uh, I had the pleasure of seeing it shown, and uh, you know, I remember I went to the Paramount Theater where it was playing with some Ava Gardner, Robert Mitchum picture, and you know, it was very exciting to see it on the screen, and it got a nationwide, nationwide, and worldwide distribution. And so um, I thought uh, everybody liked it, and they thought it was good, and I thought that this would be—I'd uh, get millions of offers, from which I got none to do anything.